trash, grime, and germs. We found it all on Sacramento's RT. Passengers complain about it, and business leaders are demanding action be taken. You'll see a lot of nasty stuff, blood, all kinds of stuff. We want things to be as clean as they possibly can. That's kind of yucky. It's really yucky. And these concerns come at a critical time as the city hopes to use light rail when the Golden One Center opens next year. Tonight in the KCRA 3 investigation, Kevin Oliver joins us now, putting the cleanliness of trains and stations to the test. That's right. We spent several days riding our T trains, and we heard from riders concerned about the state of those trains. So we collected samples of the dirt and the grime and took them to the lab for testing. And what we found could make some passengers sick. I wish I would focus more on keeping it clean, making sure the seats are clean. Michael Armstrong is studying to be a dental assistant. He uses Sacramento's light rail to get to school and to look for work. Even if I have a car, I still take the light rail because it saves on gas, it's efficient, um, during rush hour. But whenever he gets on the train, he watches where he sits and what he touches. Blood, vomit, I've seen uh, used products, all kinds of stuff. Michael says it's not just the smudges on the windows or the wrappers on the floor. You can find a lot of stuff on the light rail station. I've seen a lot. And while we were riding with him, he pointed out bloody bandages under his seat. The medical field or any other field, if, some, if someone vomits, it's automatically up. And I don't understand why it's any different for the RT. It's not just Armstrong. When other riders heard what we were working on, they had plenty to say. Just how filthy it looks. If you can see the dirt, you know there's germs. Anna McGuire told us it's not just about cleanliness, it's about respect. The reason I feel disrespected is, is because I pay. I'm sure everybody else does too. We paid to put all this in. Mike Wiley, regional transit's general manager, insists the trains don't begin the day this way. The entire interior of the, of the car will be uh, swept, mopped out, wiped down, stanchions, windows, um, all of those things get wiped um, clean every night on every train. Wiley said other crews are on call while the trains are running. We have employees that go out during the course of the day and will clean up spills, that will clean up hazards, that pick up trash. But when we shot this video, it was before 11 a.m. and we found railings that didn't look like they'd been wiped down in weeks, grungy floors, even bugs crawling around on one train. And we saw it over and over. And it's not just the people riding light rail who wish the trains were cleaner. Joe Gamble is a train operator. For some reason, it seems like it's something unique to Sacramento because I've been to other places uh, in the Bay Area. Their trains are clean. I routinely see people just drop things on the ground and they're standing right next to a garbage can. Gamble says RT just doesn't have enough people cleaning the trains. The folks that, that work in the yard are, are, again are doing the best with what they have, and there are not enough of them. The criticism doesn't stop there. With the new arena being built, regional transit is under pressure from business and community leaders to clean up its act. A group of business leaders sent a six-page memo to the transit board in January, demanding cleaner trains to make a, quote, positive first impression with special event riders. We're extremely concerned about how people perceive the service. Um, and it's not just new riders, it's our existing riders as well. Kazuma's River College bound train. But it's not just the trains. Look at these ticket machines, caked with who knows what. We found stained benches and even brand new smart card machines coated in filth. It's dirty, but is it dangerous? Each bag has a little label on them. To find out, members of our KCRA 3 investigation team went to California Laboratory Services. We want to make sure that you guys are getting the best uh, representation of the services you're swabbing. Here we got a lesson on collecting samples and then fanned out across the light rail system, swabbing anything and everything you might come in contact with. From the ticket machines to the benches, from the exit buttons to the handle straps. Let's see what we find. We took our 60 swabs, many of them looking grungy, back to the lab where certified technicians process them. Positive samples turn test sheets yellow. The more yellow squares, the more bacteria present. The results, 
15 samples, or 25 percent, tested positive for coliform bacteria. It's an indicator, right. It, it indicates that there's a problem. Lab technician Jeff Brown says the coliform itself may not be dangerous, but it's a widely used indicator of fecal contamination. We found that bacteria on station benches, a windowsill, and even the railing inside a train. And when technicians put the samples under a black light, they found something else. The glowing sample showed fecal E. coli. It came from this handle on the Gold Line train, which runs from Sacramento to Folsom. And there's lots of reasons why you might find that. Well, there's plenty of people with young kids in strollers and diapers and those sorts of things that are coming out of the strollers and sitting on the seats or sitting on a bench, um, those sorts of things. We have um, you know, a whole range of people that use the system. Um, so we're only as clean during the day as those people are that are using the system. On the windowsill of the Gold Line, something else. Fecal streptococcus. Fecal strep is still not something that you want to encounter, um, especially if you're immunocompromised, uh, an open wound, things like that. It's a, it's a nasty animal. We also found it in the elevator at the Watton I 80 station, which RT maintains. It's an elevator encased in bird droppings that smelled of urine. After seeing the results from the sample, the lab urged us to contact the health department. You shouldn't see samples like this in one of those systems. Jeff Brown told us if this was found in the water along a beach, the beach would be shut down. They, they don't let you swim in it. It's a, it's a non-contact. Non How are you doing today? Dr. Tom Hopkins, a Sacramento internist, says it's not uncommon to see these types of bacteria where there are a lot of people. The goal is to, you know, not to have a germ-free environment, which is really kind of almost impossible, but to have the environment be as clean as it possibly can. But he says fecal E. coli and strep could pose a risk to people with weaker immune systems. The people who are at risk are those people who could be immunocompromised. So elderly, you know, young kids uh, are at great risk. Wiley said the Watton I-80 station is cleaned six nights a week. The elevators here have been replaced twice, and RT has even considered closing them down at night. He says they could do more to clean the system, but it will take money. We can always add more people. We can spend more money doing more things. Um, there's, however, there are limitations on our resources. Um, so is it done enough? It's never enough. Writers say it's not just a matter of image anymore. It's a matter of a healthy, clean environment. I think that for our safety of the public, I think that it should be cleaned up like that. It needs a really good scrubbing. It's not sanitary at all. You respect your streets. You respect your, your town where you live. You keep it clean. Now, Regional Transit spends about $7.5 million a year on train upkeep. Some riders suggested that RT put hand sanitizer on the trains or at the stations. And we asked RT about that, and Mike Wiley says it's something that Regional Transit is now looking into. Well, you certainly gave it the rubber glove test. Now, uh, you mentioned the lab told you to contact the health department uh, regarding the levels of strep in that elevator. Uh, what happened with that? We did. We contacted, as soon as we got those results back, we contacted Sacramento County Public Health Department, and we were told, unless Unless someone went to their doctor and their doctor reported that a patient got sick as a result of touching something at the RT station, that the health department wouldn't act. The protocol is usually comes it usually comes from a doctor. However, I can tell you that we went back to that elevator afterward, and not only was it cleaner, it smelled like disinfectant. So, Good. some action has already so been taken. I think that the biggest worry is. is the moms, the parents with the kids, because you know they're crawling all over, touching everything, and if it's not really getting clean or disinfected, then, you know, then what? And the so. moms, the moms that we saw on the trains, they kept their kids held tight yeah, so that too. they weren't touching the poles or the chairs or yeah. anything. All right. Well, well, hope we get some action from mm -hmm. your story. Thanks, Kevin. Well, if you have a tip that you want KCRA3 to investigate or you see something that just doesn't seem right, you can contact us, KCRA Investigates at KCRA.com. Thanks.